Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video for those of you Express LRS pilots that might be struggling to get decent range or struggling to get any kind of range at all. Now I did a video a couple of weeks ago where I talked about the new Radio Master Ranger series of Express LRS modules and quite a few comments on there were people who become disillusioned with Express LRS because they were struggling to fly further than in a couple of cases 20-30 meters away some cases they were struggling to get any real distance at all. Now the challenge with Express LRS is that the project itself is only software and the quality of the hardware that you use to run that software makes a massive difference. Also there are tons of other things about the antenna alignment, whether the antenna has been damaged, the quality and the tuning of everything that's involved will kind of really give you the experience. So smart choices for picking the hardware to run Express LRS are really needed. And in the early days, lots of the hardware that came out, and some still today, play a little bit fast and loose with the specs, but also don't put a lot of love into the product and the quality suffers and the experience suffers because that hardware lets things down. Now, if you want to know more about this stuff, I have something called the Antenna Lab series. I'll put a link down below. Go and check that out. That explains how radio frequencies and antennas work in quite simplistic terms. So if you don't have to be a radio frequency expert to follow it along, uh, I did lots of it with Greg over at Menace RC. His antennas are fab and he also understands this stuff. And he's very good at abstracting all the complexity down to stuff that even I can understand. So we've made a lot of videos together. So if you want to know more about this, that's the place to go. So let's get into the slides. Time codes down below. I'll start by talking about specific things that you need to do with Express LRS to improve your range and then more generic things afterwards. And we'll wrap it up with how I set Express LRS up here and how I'm having a lot of fun with it. I need to say a massive thank you to a gentleman called Simeon, who's one of the Express LRS developers who had taught this through with. So this isn't just my idea of what's right. I've actually checked it with the ELRS devs too. So the number one tip is reduce the speed. A lot of the latest updates that are coming along with the D and F speeds, uh, F500, F1000 hertz, are really designed for very close in racing to give you the minimum amount of latency. Things like the diversity settings to give you the chance of even when you're flying in these very challenging conditions where using very high speeds, you use the diversity, you send the packet twice. There's loads of different settings. Do not use any of those if you're having problems with range. The first thing I'd do is reduce the speed. Below 333 uh, hertz or 250, I actually fly a lot of my wings on 150 and get a much longer range. It is a trade-off. The higher you crank the speed, the lower the range. If you want more range, you crank down the speed. The next big tip is it might be the receiver that you're using. I've had issues uh, not with Express LRS systems as much as older systems like the AWCST version 1 stuff from FreeSky where I would buy XATARs like they were going out of fashion. And occasionally you would get one that was a dud. You'd put it in a model, you'd go and fly it, and very quickly you'd get telemetry lost errors. And then after that, you'd start to get fail safes where you replace it with another one another receiver with the antennas routed in exactly the same way and it would work perfectly. All of the Express LRS hardware manufacturers have different approaches to quality. You get what you pay for with this like everything else. So some of the more expensive receivers that have some of the better features, we'll talk about that in a moment, will give you a better chance of it all working and working fine. Even things like the cold can affect some of the receivers particularly the cheap and cheerful ones. So when you're flying in winter, you might find that uh, it'll drift out or as it gets hot inside the model, the frequency that it's tuned to will drift out far enough away that you'll start to have range issues. The other thing that you can do is also use a receiver with diversity antennas. They've started to come out now. Things like these new ones from Beta FPV, which not only have diversity receivers and antennas on them, but also have a couple of other tricks as well. In fact, these antennas, I know lots of people are um, not big fans of Beta FPV for Express LRS stuff, but actually these are probably some of the best I've seen. Talking to the developers, they feel the same way. But having two antennas allows you two chances to pick it up. And if you mount the antennas slightly differently as a V or a Y or in slightly different axes, as you're flying and tumbling and rolling around, you're not going to get in a condition where the antenna is completely obstructed from the radio and vice versa, and you lose your connection. 
Last one is to look at the specs of the receivers that you're using. Again, the super cheap receivers don't have any of this stuff in. Higher end receivers from people like TBS Crossfire and those guys have had this kind of stuff in for a long time. The first thing is low noise amplification. That makes sure that they, when they amplify the signal that they hear, they don't also amplify a load of noise and trash of the local RF environment that make just means that you can't hear what's going on. And the second thing is something called temperature compensation. Uh, TCXO is what it can be written down as. That means that, again, as that temperature changes, the frequency in the oscillation that's being used to have it tuned so that it's tuned perfectly to the radio so we can hear everything doesn't wander with temperature again these beta fpv uh, receivers are some of the first that i've seen that i've had in here that do that so if you are struggling with range there's a good chance it's probably the receiver or the antenna placement that's the issue so now we've talked about the specifics for express lrs Maybe you've done all of that or some of those things you can't do. Let's talk about the generic stuff that will affect the range that you get out of your RF equipment. First thing to do is check your antennas. If they've been damaged, nicked, the end's been cut off, then you know what? You need to go and find a replacement and pop it on. Flying with damaged antennas isn't going to do you any favors at all. Similarly, make sure that the connectors are pushed home. Make sure that the SMA or RPSMA connector on the radio module that you're using is nice and secure. Also check that the UFL connector or whatever it is on the receiver that you're using is also pressed home as well and hasn't been popped loose under the goop that's trying to to stop it popping off the PCB. Antenna alignment is absolutely crucial. Now I learned this probably only seven or eight years ago because I tend to fly reasonably close in anyway. But with some of the longer range systems, you will tend to find that antenna alignment is really important. If you have your antenna mounted horizontally on the radio like this, then you want the antenna mounted in the same way. However, I would always recommend wherever you can, put the antennas vertically on the radio and put the antennas vertically on the model. That means that as they're aligned, they're getting the maximum signal. And as they roll around, as the model flies in the sky, anything up to about 45 degrees out of phase between the two antennas, you'll still get 70% of the signal with the rest of it disappearing as it kind of moves completely out of phase. So that's one of the really important things to do. Make sure that your antennas are in a smart place. Make sure that it's not mounted next to carbon fiber or metal or hidden away inside the model. Think about antenna placement. That's one of the big things that catches people out. As I said, one of the other things that can be the problem is cheaper equipment might be poorly tuned and might be wandering out of tune. So although it's supposed to be working on this specific frequency, the radio is transmitting here, the receiver's listening here, and they're just too far away. So it might work when it's at your feet and you arm the thing and you take off, but then after 20 feet, the whole thing just kind of falls apart. The other option is to use the lower frequencies. Now, Express LRS is available in 2.4, which is what those Ranger modules were that we looked at the other day. Lots of pilots, I think, are going for the 2.4. It tends to be the default choice. But don't forget about that 900 megahertz version as well. Hopefully, we'll see some of those Ranger modules from Radio Master in that lower frequency. That lower frequency provides a lot more propagation for the same amount of power, i.e. it travels further. And it also has a little bit more penetration power, so it can get through some of the obstacles that will block a 2.4 gigahertz signal. The other one, of course, is to use more power. Now, you have to be a little bit careful with this. A couple of things. First of all is that lots of places have a legal power limit, so be aware of that. And the second thing is that using too much power can actually be counterproductive because you can be screaming away uh, when something's quite close in. So if you have tried ramping up the power and it's not helping, things are getting worse, try actually turning it down because it might be that you are causing issues with things like the noise floor and other issues in the local environment and it might actually work to your advantage to turn it down. Slightly counterintuitive, but something to try. The other option, of course, is to use more sensitive antennas. More sensitive antennas, rather than being omnidirectional, i.e. they can hear a signal in any direction, they tend to be more directional. Things like the Moxon antenna that we looked at, at Radio Master, their new stuff that's out, is one of those new directional antennas. The price you pay, of course, is that you lose some of that ability to fly in any direction. And the last bit is just best practice, I guess. 
First of all is that some environments are very noisy with radio frequency. The 2.4 gigahertz in particular are frequencies that are used by a massive amount of electronics, including things like Wi-Fi in your house. So if you are finding that you are having problems with it, it could be that there's so much noise already around that the e Express LRS system is just having trouble doing that. Similarly, in a field, if it's near RF antennas or things like that, that can cause a problem too. And that's the last tip. When you're in the field and you're flying with a flying buddy, don't stand right close to each other, huddling together for warmth. I would separate yourself out. Give yourself a good two or three meters, and that way then your radios aren't kind of uh, shouting over each other. It gives you a little bit more space, and that can help with range as well. So for me, how do I use it here? Well, I use the 2.4 system a lot, but if I was struggling for range or struggling to fly in an area that seemed to struggle with 2.4, then I would get one of the 868 or 915 Express LRS units and give that a try. If I was having issues where I have a couple of models, one seems to fly great, the other one doesn't, then things like your antenna alignment stuff, but also the quality of the receiver can make a massive difference. I potentially would look at replacing the receiver in there to see if that makes any difference and also have a look at how the antenna is placed and aligned with the radio. If you are lucky enough to have a receiver with diversity antennas, most of us are only just starting to play with these now, then mount them so they are at an angle. Uh, this is pretty standard practice. You'll see it on loads of my different models. Here is an example on my Dolphin. Uh, these are the two antennas from a FreeSky receiver, actually. But I have the antenna vertical on the radio, and these two antennas at this kind of 90 degree here at the back of the Dolphin means that as it turns and rolls in the sky, one of them is kind of always coming to into phase unless I really start doing some acrobatics. Be aware of those little ceramic receivers that you get on some whoops and other things. I've had nothing but bad experiences with those. I prefer the small whip antennas and actually Beta FPV replaced the uh, review units if you remember those that I had. They did a whoop a little while back that had Express LRS built in and they, after the review, all the reviewers kind of went back and went, the range is terrible. They replaced it with a little uh, piece of piece of wire rather than that little ceramic thing that's uh, on the PCB and it made a massive difference, much, much better with that kind of antenna. Obviously, I don't fly at the super high speeds. Don't use the, uh, the D or the F speeds. That is going to impact your range. If you have issues with range, number one tip I would do would be decrease the speed and see if that makes a difference. And then the last two tips, of course, is that you can, of course, increase the power. But if you've been increasing the power, and it's not making any difference. It's actually making it worse. You're probably overwhelming everything. I would actually take it the other way, reduce the power. You might find that that might work for you. And the last one is do check the antenna alignment. This is something that I fall foul of five or six years ago when I really started to get into TBS Crossfire. I found that mounting everything vertically, having the antenna vertical on the radio, having the receiving antennas vertical on the model. Uh, if it's a single one or in that kind of V or Y shape, if it's a diversity setup like one of the new beta FPV receivers, that was the perfect way to do it. So there we have it. Those are the kind of tips and tricks if you're using Express LRS and you're having troubles with range. First and foremost, I would reduce the speed of the link. That's going to dramatically increase the range that you get. And secondly, make sure that things like your antenna alignment and the quality of the hardware you're using are up to par as well. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.